Hello and welcome to the Water Caravan video handover for this 2015 Buccaneer Caravel. Um, I'll start round at the back as I normally do just to go around the outside and then we will go inside and uh, talk you through all of the uh, all the features. Okay as you can see grab handles and light clusters on both sides. Uh, as you can see there's a great big bike rack and uh, high brake light place for your number plates um, the light clusters there for the uh, indicators brakes running lights reversing lights uh, no need to show you the uh, corner settings because that's all on the self-leveling there is a separate video for that but if we go around the outside see windows into the bedroom then you've got your two outlet pipes Waste outlets, that's for your uh, the two sinks, kitchen and bathroom, and for the shower. Uh, also here you've got um, uh, a power touch evolution, evolution I should say, uh, oil drive motor movers. Again, separate videos for those. Uh, twin axle, uh, the wheel nuts are torqued up to 130 Newton meters. And I'll get to the uh, PSI pressures that need to be for the, for the tires. Coming over to the battery box. I have opened as many of the uh, lockers as I can, but some are still in locking, so do bear with me. So in here, obviously, there's your leisure battery, 110 amp battery, uh, electric uh, hookup, and next to that, you can just see the uh, isolator for the motor mover. Uh, it's put there, so you can't actually engage the motor mover while you're still hooked up. Also behind there, there's a little 12 volt socket. Uh, okay, you've got an outside shower point. Cold water only. And this is where the water pump goes in. Just bear with me, I'll get the water pump. Okay, so here's the water pump. And that's the rail water system. That slides in there and clicks down. So in this part, there's a little clip there. That goes in there to stop that falling on the floor. This is the pump that goes into the aqua roll. Turn the pump on. We've got enough uh, water going through. Okay. Moving along a little bit further, that's the. Uh, it's got the Aldi heating and hot water system. So, if you're running it on gas, that is the exhaust pipe for that area. Let's just put it back into the locker. Back at the front. As you can see, got the gas locker open. So in the gas locker, uh, the facility to have two uh, gas bottles. Got an outside uh, gas barbecue point in here. This one's got a couple of wheel locks, the diamond wheel locks, and that big tail is set up for propane. It's running on the um, BPW chassis. Got the stabilizers, a swing tech chassis. Sounds a bit good. Obviously you've got the three windows at the front, back in here sign there, the grab handles. I mean the grab handles, well, it's quite hard to move one of these things, they're a little bit on the heavy side. Well, round to this side, you've got the outside gas barbecue. Uh, do not barbecue in the awning is the warning on there, and I heartily agree with that. That's uh, definitely a no-no. You don't want any fires in, there in an awning. Fabric and fire, not, not good fellows. Right, so an external locker, this is underneath one of the sofas. We've also got here an external 230 volt socket and an antenna point. And this particular one's got a security handle as well. Uh, they are not standard. But here is all the information regarding the caravan. So this one's had the uh, weight plate upgrade to two, uh, two tons, so 2000 kilos is the maximum weight on here. Uh, the wheel bolt torque, uh, 130 newton meters for the alloys. If you have to put the spare wheel on the steel spare wheel, it's 102 newton meters. And you can also see there the tire pressure needs to be set at 49 psi. Okay, so you've got awning light, then you've got the vents for the top ones, the microwave, freezer, and the fridge. And here is the uh, the ever popular toilet uh, cassette area. 
opening that up. Toilet cassette to remove. You'll know when it's full because the light comes on in the toilet. Put that lift out, pull it straight towards you. When you get to the end, you can. This handle is telescopic, so that'll lift up. So and it's on wheels, so you can wheel it along. Makes it, uh, transportation easier. Then that forward, take that cap off, put it somewhere safe. You do not want that falling into the area that uh, yeah, uh, where, where everything's being emptied. Push forward and then press this loop button at the top. That will release any air pressure so that, or gas pressure and it'll empty it out. You'll want to sluice it out. So move that back, open that, sluice, sluice, and close it back up and then repeat. Put the cap, well, before you put the cap back on, there's uh, some measures on there or some indicators on there for the blue fluid. You can uh, uh, read, please read the bottle to see how much you need to use and then just pour that straight in. Okay. Close that up. In it goes and I always lock it. And just to continue around the outside, this one's particular one's got a satellite on it. So uh, that's got an added bonus. But now we're gonna go inside and see the internal features. Very spacious. Toilet and wash basin on one side, and then the shower on the other side. Apologies for any reflections you may see. But then we get to the uh, to the nitty gritty of how everything works. Right, okay, so when you first get uh, into the caravan on the left hand side, this is where all the control panels are. This one comes got some nice little holders for the motor mover and the self-leveling stuff. Uh, but uh, the previous owners have very kindly put the power switch on. So that shows us the master switch. So we switch that on. There's the master switch. Uh, internal lights of the next one. I'll just turn that on. You can see. So that's that one. These two are the external lights. You've got the awning lights and the gas locker light and the service light on the other side. Okay. So that's your lights. Uh, very quick check. Uh, you can check on here the voltage. 13.3, uh, doesn't surprise me because we're plugged into the mains. And you also have an internal water tank in here. And if you press that one, it'll tell you the percentage of water in there. And it, this one is currently empty. Right, for the water, to get water inside, uh, I showed you where the water pump goes in. And on here, you have got three different uh, ways of um, uses of the water, three button areas. Okay, so in the center position, that will allow water to come in from the outside. So whether that's an aqua roll or a, or a direct feed, uh, that's, that's the way the water comes in. If you're using an aqua roll, you will need to turn the water pump on. If you're using a direct feed straight from the tap in there, you do not turn the pump on. You, it runs off the pressure of the tap. Now, uh, be warned, the tap, uh, if the pressure is high on the tap, that can cause a problem whereby uh, that could, uh, it could, the pressure could be too much for the pump and, and, and if the pump fails or the pipe fails and you can have uh, water coming into your van. So half a turn on the tap just to check it. But if you're on a high pressure area, I would recommend probably using an aqua roll or a universal mains adapter inside an aqua roll, which is works like a toilet system. But so that's to, to run the aqua roll or the water from outside. Uh, some people will want to use the internal tank. To fill up the internal tank, you need to come from an external source. So connect your water roll, your aqua roll of 40 liters, 
press external with the pump on, that will pump the water from the uh, from that Aquarol into the internal tank, which is located under the bed. Then to use that water, you would then press on internal. Obviously you would need the, the, the uh, power on, on the water pump. Uh, so the middle uh, setting is to get water from outside, uh, not using your internal tank. You can use your internal tank by pressing int. However, you need to fill that internal tank up from an external source. Okay, so that's the water. While we're talking about the water, I'll show you where the uh, that external or well, internal tank is. I should say under the bed, and there it is. There. Now that internal tank can hold forty liters, and when you need to empty it to move. You can see there, there's a blue tap that's currently saying close, so it's allowing water in to open up and let all the water out. Literally just turn it to open and that will drain any water straight down onto the floor. Okay, so I'm going to leave that open and remind the new owners how when they have it, they need to close that if they want to use the internal tank. Again, whilst we're talking about the water system, water tank it's located under here underneath the right hand front uh, sofa and see that yellow tap well that yellow tap currently is allowing water to come into the caravan as in into the water heater and to the water system the tap system when uh, traveling but particularly when winterizing that tap needs to be put vertical just hear some water coming out because there is a bit of water in the in the hot water tank that will drain all the water out of the system and if you open your taps as well make sure there's no water in the system over winter very quickly while we're in here as well underneath here here is the uh the breaker switches and the fuse box okay but back to the main control panel this here is for the Alde heating and hot water system. So to turn it on, the power button is that one. Currently saying it's 26 degrees in here and doesn't it feel like it? And we're currently plugged into the electric. So I don't know if you can see this particularly well. To set the temperature that you want the van, the top one is just showing you a thermometer. Uh, you can, it's a touch screen, simply press plus or minus to change the temperature to whatever you want it to be. You can, if you wish, uh, set, go into the settings and have a night setting whereby you set the temperature between whatever time, turn that on, go back and you'll see the A there, which is for an activated function. There was already one on there, it was. So we've got activated functions, we've got the nighttime setting so just press on that and turn that off to turn it off then this one is showing you what the load monitor is for the heating system only you can set that to whatever you need or you can just turn it off off so then go back to the main menu and that a so there are no longer any activated functions on here the temperature wise like i say up or down um, if you're lazy like me, and at night you don't want to set yourself a nighttime setting, I just come back and turn it to, <laughs> turn it down to whatever I want it to. The second one down is to do with the water heater. It's the little shower sign. It's the water heating. When that when that is empty, when that triangle is empty, there's no power going to the water heating, so you've got no hot water. Press once. Press the plus once. It will fill up halfway. That will give you enough hot water for most of the time. The only time you will need to boost the water to its full capacity is when uh, maybe a, two or three of you are gonna go and have a shower in quick succession or whatever, or if you need hot water rapidly. Okay, that, that setting will be enough for you most of the time as it is. Now with the power, the next one down is to do with the power. Currently it's turned off. 
Oh, but before I go back on it, if this is on full, sorry, that's me keep pressing the button. If it's on full, that then takes all the power away from the heating system. So you will only have hot water, no heating. That way they work in conjunction together. Right, so the power levels are one kilowatt. So if you have one kilowatt, this is just for the heating and hot water. So one kilowatt, that will heat things up, but very slowly. In the UK, I always recommend going on to two kilowatts because that gives you enough power to heat things up quickly enough um, without draining too much power from whatever you've got available to you. You can go up to three kilowatts, but if you're on a 10 amp site and you put that on, as soon as you put the kettle on or anything on, it will pop the switch or pop the breaker on the pole. Okay. Or it may do. But I always recommend two kilowatts, absolutely fine. You can run on gas, turn the electric off, and if you're off grid, you can just run it on gas if you wish. See? There are an awful lot of settings in here that you can play with, which is why we give you the instruction manual. Uh, we'd be here all day long going through that. So that's the heating system and the hot water system. Right. For the rest of the van, let's have a wander around and see what we've got. So lots of cupboard space, but the first cupboard has got the stereo. Uh, this one's a CD uh, player as well, has a USB socket and an auxiliary socket. Up there is the charging unit for the solar panel that's on here. Uh, you've got a 100 watt solar panel on here, so it uh, will help uh, keep, it will trickle charge the battery, uh, permanently trickle charge. It's, it, it's, it's not good enough to say, okay, if you were going to go out uh, into green fields where there's no power available, the battery will still run down if you're using all the 12 volt system, um, but it certainly helps, particularly with storage, but the battery will still eventually wear down, okay? So lots of storage, but windows, standard window catches, up and open, tighten them up to keep them open. Blinds, you've got blackout blinds, then above those, fly screens. They're on all of the windows, except this one. This one just has a blackout blind because it doesn't open. Okay. Here you've got table, comes out for, for a cup of tea in the morning or a glass of wine at night, or maybe more than a glass of wine at night. Then you've got drawers, obviously, lots of drawer space. This comes out, well, they go right along just to uh, make up the bed. Storage under there, we've already been into there from the under storage, under, from the exterior uh, locker. We've seen under this side, obviously just more cupboard space. More cupboard space there, you can see that's the uh, unit for the motor mover, or one of the units. Lots of cupboard space. This is a freestanding table, but lots of drawer space. Massive drawers for the kitchen. Um, <laughs> you could really quite easily go to town on those and fill them up. Well, my wife would. Right, okay, over here, up in this one, you've got the TV uh, aerial points, two, two 30 volt sockets, and a 12 volt socket as well. This one has already got a uh, TV bracket there. Yeah, these are the light switches for the kitchen area. You've got also a little switch down there for an internal light. That's a, basically a, a little light to guide you in at night when you've had a couple of lemonades. This one's for the main lights. And then you've got some under uh, lighting under there, a bit of mood lighting, which is nice. Again, cupboard space galore. Place for your cups and plates. Cocktail cabinet, ever popular, with a light inside. So that's all very good. Nice sink, this one's got a bowl in it. Simple mixer, tap. Be very careful when you turn the hot water on, you make sure you use some cold water with it because the hot water is very hot. Okay. Right then, you've got the cooker. This cooker has an electric hob and three gas burners. It has a separate grill and oven. Uh, light for the oven and then that's a spark for your uh, gas burners and, and the uh, grill and oven. Uh, word of warning, the electric hob 
will still turn on even if the lid is down. The gas won't, but the electric hob will. Uh, so if you've got young ones that are you know, quite likely to turn knobs or accidentally knock it, uh, you might want to unplug it from the plug area there. Also here, there's a gas isolator for the cooker, uh, should you wish to use that as well. On the other side, microwave oven. Um, the switch for the microwave is there. That's the isolated switch, just turn on, press the eco to turn it on, and then you have your microwave oven. You also have the fridge, fridge freezer. So to turn the fridge and fr fridge freezer on, that, uh, that switches it on. The first one that shines up is the electric, so that's good news because we are plugged into the electric. You can also run it on gas or it will run on the car battery. But when I say it runs on the car battery and alternator, what that means is as long as the fridge is cold already, if you have a 13 pin plug or the two sevens, you can all the, you can maintain the temperature of a fridge. It will not cool it down from the start, but it will maintain the temperature. And whilst we're talking temperature, you can change the temperature on your fridge using this. Inside the fridge itself, nice large fridge, nice big area for your ice, for your gin and tonics, your Bacardi and Cokes or whatever is your tipple or your Ribena, entirely up to you. Just showing you while we're in here, uh, the satellite uh, connection part uh, to turn the satellite to move the satellite dish, uh, switch on there. You'll always, always be looking for Astra 28 in the UK. If you go abroad, uh, there, there will be a, a booklet with this to show you how to connect everything up. It's a nice little bonus having that. Okay. Right into the mid bathrooms area. There's the shower. When you're in transit, make sure this strap is uh, connected. Open up the shower. Quite a nice shower for you. Keep that closed then. Other side, I was very briefly showed you earlier, uh, the toilet. Obviously it's a swivel toilet. Once you've done what you need to do, open the flap to drop it into that cassette we've seen earlier on, but make sure you close it afterwards. Otherwise you cannot get the cassette out. Um, or you can, but you will break something. Here, this is where the light comes on to say that the cassette is full. That'll, uh, that'll be just before you go to bed. I will absolutely guarantee it. Um, towel rail, that's connected to the Aldi heating system. So that will get very hot. Uh, be careful with that. Uh, if it doesn't get hot, well, if it gets hot at the bottom, cool at the top, it's, got, it's like a radiator at home. Just bleed the, bleed the, uh, bleed the radiator. Cupboard space. Horrible picture in the mirror. Cupboard space underneath as well. And there's your mixer tap, etc., for the hand basin. Uh, well, one feature to show you, you can absolutely close off the bedroom and bathroom area to have an ensuite. I'll just step back into the bedroom part. So you've got complete privacy. Uh, if you've got a couple, someone with you, and you don't want them seeing you asleep while they go to the bathroom, you do have a, a blind that comes across for a little bit of extra privacy. So, still in the bathroom, no, bedroom, sorry. Lots of privacy. Again, when in transit, make sure these are strapped up. Ooh. Right, but we've seen under the bed already. Um, lots of wardrobe space and cupboard space. This wardrobe's got the Alde heating, uh, uh, it's the um, header tank. Uh, the fluid is 50% glycol, 50% water. <clears throat> you shouldn't have to do anything with that. Uh, it's, it's something that's checked every time you have a service. 
So you do have an internal light in here. Sometimes you have to move your hand in to have a look. And sometimes not. So. Again, another wardrobe on the other side. Oh, that one did come on. I'm going to get the boys to have a look at that. That was on the other side. Little handy areas for a cup of tea in the morning. And obviously your drawers. And a couple of more cupboards in there. Another TV bracket. And the TV point is just there. Uh, blackout blinds. Ooh, can't reach. Blackout blinds. And fly screens on all of the uh, sunroofs. Bonus of an omni vent in this one. So you can open this out and then have either air coming in or going out or air coming in by pressing that power on. Carbon monoxide alarm, uh, smoke alarm in here as well. Pretty much covered all we need to cover. So this, like I say, is the uh, 2015 Buccaneer Caravel. Um, hope you enjoy it. It's a lovely van. Please enjoy it. If you have any questions, please do give us a call on 01373 752 100. In the meantime, thank you for your time.